Hello friends. I Every winter another thing I do is reseason my cast iron. Uh, I already did it. And I was thinking, you know what would be cool? To hang these up on the wall. Uh, you know, you see a bunch of people doing that, like that. Instead of having them like crammed in a drawer. Um, and uh, so I, I talked to a friend who's a blacksmith and he made me a bunch of these hooks. And they're very cool. And uh, so, you know, they're going to go up on the wall. This I'm in my shed. This will go in my kitchen. But uh, I have this kind of wood frame for a refrigerator, which is a little, a little weird, but it's kind of cool. And so I, I hung up the pans on, uh, it's, it's going to go into wood, right? So like similar to these. And uh, so the, the pan will hang from the hook. Something I noticed was that the edge of the pan, uh, so, you know, as it's hanging down, the edge of the pan will sit and rest against that wood. And I think like, well, you know, if you have metal rubbing against wood over years, it'll make marks, it'll deplete the finish, etc. And uh, I didn't want that, you know, because it's, 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 uh, it's old, right? And I don't, I don't want it to degrade. Um, so I thought, how can I add like a little bumper or something there that would be elegant and kind of homey? And I came up with uh, corks, like wine corks. I took a cork like so <laughs> and split it with a razor blade just down the middle. It's a little rugged, um, but I think it'll glue down just fine. And I'm going to put it on little strips of wood and mount that under. So now, you know, the hook will be up top and then this will rest down below and the pan will rest against this cork. I'm gonna kind of give that a shot. So a little bit of a crafty day, um, but I think it'll look good. I think it'll look pretty good when it's done. So uh, here's what I'm gonna make. It's just a, so I got some of this lightweight, it's like a veneer panel. It's pretty thin. Um, I'm gonna make, this is my prototype. <clears throat> Needs a little sanding as you can tell. A little more sanding I should say. Um, get that nice smooth exterior. But this is just a thin piece of veneer uh, that I'm going to mount a cork to. Uh, so I'm going to make five more of these <laughs> um, on this sheet. So basically, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use the natural edge of the material, little Stanley scribe. Just like that. And then cut it here on the edge. Um, so the trick to cutting, I don't know if you can see this. The trick to cutting straight with a saw is to have a clean saw blade. Uh, you can see, here we'll do it sideways, you can see the reflection of the material you're working on in the blade. Right, so I can set it on my line, and if my saw is straight this way, it'll look like it'll just mirror into the blade, so it'll be one contiguous line. If it's off this way, you'll also tell. So there's, there's two angles with which the saw needs to be uh, flush, and you can see that in the reflection of the blade. I am not sure that you can see it, <laughs> so you may have to trust me on that, but... Uh, It'll be there. And that's the easiest way to get a pretty straight line with a handsaw. And of course, once you start, uh, you know, life is very easy. Let's see how to do this one. Difficult angle. But luckily, this wood is very light. Okay, just like that. All right, now um, use a chisel just to kind of shore up some of these cut lines, get some of the frayed edge off.
being pretty light on it. This is just so that sanding can be more sanding and not actual removal. If you have to kerf a few edges, it's okay. All right. <coughs> so I'm gonna just start with getting a getting the corner knocked off, the edge knocked off. Um, be very careful. Well, it's hard to do this so the camera can see it. Be very careful when you reach the end of the board. It'll have a tendency to strip out. When I did the prototype, I just did this in my hand. It is a little easier. Yeah, you're just looking for something like that. <clears throat> and then you can file down or sand down this edge. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, I've done more on this side than this side. So to shore that up, I'm gonna put pressure on the, on the side that needs more. Just a little bit. There we go. Now they're pretty even. You can draw the material towards you. And there we go, that gives me the curve that I'm looking for. This wood is so light, I don't think that step is particularly useful, but on a harder wood or a bigger project, uh, being able to just chip off a curl will save you no small amount of time. Woodworker would make himself a sanding board. Uh, I am not <laughs> a real woodworker. Um, if you're wondering why I'm just dealing with this little orbital sandpaper, it is because I am a hack. Works very well. There we go. Just like that. I guess this edge could round a little more. Okay. Last step is to drill two holes. Drill is in another room, so I won't show you that, but basically all I'm doing is lining the prototype up on top and drilling through it uh, just to project the holes down underneath, but I won't bother with that. All right. Okay, uh, now that that's done, I've got a little $5 can of wood stain. Uh, my idea here is that the cast iron is black. The, uh, the hook is black. Let's see this one here. And so I was thinking that the wood itself, I, will, I have no chance of matching that stain. Um, and so I think the right answer is to just stick with the black theme and, uh, and go from there. Ah. So I'm going 
to stains I have like a tiny brush <laughs> and yeah just trying to just one and done stain it hopefully it looks okay when it's done I can always like poly like clear polyurethane on it I think I have some um, one thing which I actually forgot to do until just this moment and this may not be necessary because the stain is pretty light but I was trying to leave the middle of it unstained um, I'll probably do that on the second one the reason being I think that it will have better glue adherence but maybe it doesn't matter because the stain is pretty light I mean the color is not but the you know the actual impact on the wood is pretty pretty minimal there we go <clears throat> all right I'm gonna do a whole bunch more and just like that I got five done and right after there after it's been sitting there for a few minutes, I just have like an old glove. Uh, it's important to kind of wipe off the rest of the finish. Uh, if you don't, it's just going to look matte and, and you're going to lose a lot of your cool wood grain look. Uh, I have no idea if the camera can pick this out, but all I'm doing is just trying to remove that top layer of stain that didn't absorb. Uh, I suppose you don't actually have to do this. Um, on something this small and porous, I think you'll have an okay result. But I want to get it to not look like black 3-0, you know, but have that more kind of charcoal wood look. But I actually really like how this is turning out. Uh, so they're pretty much dry. I went ahead and did the clear varnish. I think in the light you can see, I just did the varnish around the ring so that I could maintain good glue exposure. Uh, for glue today, I just have a little Gorilla Glue, a cup of water. This is so that I can hydrate the corks, not the corks, but the, the glue. Um, so that's it. You put a little, just, you know, wet your finger. We may do that on both sides. Why not? Um, this activates the Gorilla Glue. And then, put. I'm gonna, you have to be really careful because this stuff expands uh, pretty severely. Because this stuff really expands. There we go. And now we we'll give it a couple minutes. Let's pull the sucker out. He was the first. He should probably be set. Yeah. Uh, it's my little screw. I'll just use this other one. Very quickly rub off the overglue. All right, here's the finished work. All five pans. They look pretty good, I think. Um, here's the finish and attached to the wall. They rest nicely just here. Uh, yeah, all of them, my little antique one. All of them just kind of fit nicely. And uh, quite happy with the, with the outcome. Good craft.